Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is Kido Muji from KD Concept Researchers. Please kindly uh, like and subscribe to our channel so that you can always get our videos before it drops. We'll be looking at what we have already done in Excel. That is regression and correlation analysis. Now remember that regression is used to find out the impacts of uh, predictors or what you call independent variables on a dependent variable. The last time we were looking at this data, let me share it now. Now we are looking at this data here. We have, we have uh, looking at this variable the last time, this impacts of financial institution on Nigerian economy sector, where we try to regress demand deposits, credits to private sector, money supply, and narrow money. Try to regress it on nominal GDP. Now, how do we conduct such regression analysis? in SPSS becomes uh, our primary objective this night. So here we have about five columns, year, period, nominal GDP, and the rest of them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to split my screen into two. Let me see if I can be able to achieve that. Then come back to my SPSS screen here. Now, I'm going to create uh, some columns in my variable view. So in my SPSS, I'm going to create variable names starting with year. Then we are looking at period. I also have nominal, I will use underscore now, then GDP. We have, uh, I can even copy them from here if I wish, or we'll copy the variable names and then paste. Okay, didn't allow me to paste. So we have a demand, a reason that's called deposit. It didn't pay because there was space between them. Then we have credits to private. I could just leave this as credits that I will label this way. Then we'll have money supply underscore supply. Then we we'll have narrow money. Okay, so I've created the five variables. Now these five variables now are the items that are already in our Excel. We have year, period, nominal GDP, demand deposits, credits, money supply, and narrow money. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring the data from Excel into SPSS. This is our Excel data. So I'm going to highlight the entire data area. This is also how you copy uh, data sets into SPSS. Now highlight the entire data, I'll copy it here, or you press Ctrl C to copy. And I will head back to my SPSS. Now, starting from the year and from number one, I'm going to right click and paste this data here. Paste. Now, observe that the, the data is going to fit the entire area. Oh, period is not didn't copy. Now, period did not copy because in my variable view, I have said all variables are of type numeric, but my period is a string. So I'm going to edit this period here. Can you see this period? I'll click here. 
beside it and I'll change it to string because that one is showing us quarters. So quarters is going to be a string, not number. Let's go back now. So I'll go back to my Excel. And I'll copy this data again, then go back to SPSS. And again, I will paste. Now, observe that now our period has been added quarter one, quarter two to four, and it continues between 2010 till 2022. Now, this data set is all complete and it's all set. One other thing you need to do before you carry out your analysis is inspect your data for missing values. Okay. Now there is no missing value. All data, all columns are having 49 uh, rows, all complete. So our data is now set for regression analysis. So very quickly, how do we uh, conduct a regression analysis? We are nominal GDP will be our dependent variable, and the rest of these other variables here become our independent variable. Of course, you know, for every form of analysis, you must go from the analysis menu. So you click on analysis. Now, scroll to where you see regression. Now this is the regression. And now they're asking on what kind of regression are we concentrating? We are just concentrating on linear regression. So from analyze, you go to regression, then you select linear. The dialog box will be out. Now, pay attention to this dialog box, it's very important. Now, this is where you set your dependent variable and your independent variables. So quickly, my dependent variable is nominal GDP. So I will just click on nominal GDP and then I'll move it to dependent variable. Now, these other ones here, I don't need year and period. I just need these variables from demand deposits up to narrow money. They are my independent variable, or what you call predictors. So I'll click on the first one, then hold my shift and click on the last one so that the four variables will be highlighted. Then I'll use this arrow here to move them to my independent variable. So we have our dependent variable, and we also have our independent variables. Now let's check out some statistics. Now in statistics, they're asking us, what do you want to show? Do you want to show the estimates, the mode in? I think this is all okay. Then what about plots? Okay, you can add normality plots and histogram. Okay, those are just supporting evidence. Now this is all set. I've moved in my dependent and independent variable. I'll just click on okay then you allow the results to load. I'm going to switch now to the results menu so that I can see the output of the regression analysis. Over here, we are now expecting our results to be displayed. Sometimes uh, SPSS takes a little while to display results. So all you have to do at this point is to give it time. Okay, our results are out. Now, this is the regression result, starting from the first uh, table where we have variables entered and removed. Now, this first table is simply telling us that the number of variables that we are used in this uh, uh, regression analysis. You can see nominal, narrow money, money supply, credit demand, deposit money. These are all our independent variables. And now we are telling you that the dependent variable is nominal GDP. Now, the second table here tells us about the performance of the model, it gives us our model summary. We can see clearly from here that our R is 90, 0.935, uh, uh, 0.935, which is about 93.5%. Of course, uh, we have agreed that for multiple regression, it is best we use our our adjusted R square. So both R square and adjusted R square performed very well. This is a very good model because the adjusted R square here is 86.4%. This is a very good model. And now to show that this model is good, let us look at the ANOVA performance. 
Now, if you look at the ANOVA performance here, we see that the ANOVA is very significant. Remember what the ANOVA is checking. Usually, the ANOVA and regression analysis tests the null hypothesis that the independent variables does not significantly predict the dependent variable versus they do. So this is not the case what we have here for it. To, it is significant showing that the independent variables actually accounted very well for the behavior of the dependent variable. So the significance of the ANOVA is supported by the R square value. Where you are having a high R square, it's expected that your ANOVA will also be highly significant. Now, down here, we have a table of uh, coefficients. Remember our Bs. Our Bs, these are the coefficients of our predictors, starting with the constant term, and then demand, deposits, credits, and all that. If you also look at their significance, just like we had in Excel, we discover here that only money supply showed a significant uh, behavior. So this is the predictor which actually accounts for uh, the performance of nominal GDP. Down here, we have uh, other supporting uh, tables like the table of residuals, okay? And here we have uh, our histogram plots. You can see here now that uh, most of the data points fits into the normal curve. The, the data fits perfectly almost perfectly into the normal curve. And now this is what uh, the scatter diagram looks like. You notice that a good number of data points fits into this normal probability plots. So uh, overall, this model is good. And how do you know the model is good? By the performance of the R square. Of course, this tells you the, the uh, degree of accuracy of a model. And the R square is also supported by um, this significant N over here. So this is how to interpret your regression model. However, if you want to write out the model, it is these values of B here that are used to write your regression model. So the model now is going to be uh, GDP equal to 3250.25. Three, then minus 0 0.005 multiplied by demand deposits plus approximately zero credits. So that means this one does not even really play any rule. Then plus 0 0.001 of money supply and then plus 0 0.005 of narrow money. Now demand deposits is showing a negative effect on nominal GDP. Why? other variables here are having positive effects on nominal GDP. So this is basically how to run your regression analysis. Now let's go back to... Thank you for watching this video. You can also check out some other videos that are prepared to this one on our course series in data analysis using Microsoft Excel. Please kindly leave your questions in the comment section and we'll attend to them. Also remember to like, share, comment, and most especially, please kindly subscribe to this channel so that we can always serve you better. Thank you.